Okay, those um, on the uh, say on the left side, uh, kindly leave some space. On the left side, kindly leave some space, and maybe on the right side as well, leave some space so that people can come in and go, come in and go. Okay. 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 Only this side. Only the uh, to my left side. To your right side. Only to your right side. Just leave a space there so that everybody can come in and they can go. Okay. With that in mind, what we're going to do is that we're going to do a very quick lesson on Heart Sutra. Okay. Having made the persuasions, uh, then uh, let us sit down. Sasha? Uh, there are most uh, there are more space next to me. There are more space next to me. Uh, please come up. There are more space next to me. Okay. Just come up, come up, come up. There are more space next to me. ที่ที่ปะมาของพระพุทธเจ้าในอัปยุทธ์ขอบคุณครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับครับ
With this in mind, um, imagine that, that the Buddha is here and all the uh, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are here in front of you. And how do you visualize that? Imagine, uh, imagine that um, that they are like your mothers, and you are uh, you are the, the child. And coming home so sad, having the good boy, the elder, elder children in the school, and then look at the kind of love and affection with which your mother is waiting for you. This is exactly how Buddhist and Bodhisattvas they are waiting for you here in front of you. Next, visualize the Bodhisattva field, your two grandparents, all the family members, and all the mother sentient beings around you, they will not die. And imagine uh, that the purpose of this practice is eventually to unfold the hidden treasure of the Buddha nature, the ultimate source of happiness which exists within ourselves. So far we have been just engrossed with the superficial source of happiness and because of which we attract so much of problems, uh, problems such as problems um, such as uh, sickness, aging, death, fear and so forth. They are all connected with the, the deprivation of the superficial source of happiness. And the ultimate source of happiness, we never even touch that. So this is the year. Once you have it, why should you be so concerned about the superficial uh, source of happiness? So with that in mind, uh, keep in mind that the, the whole purpose of what we're doing here is to activate this ultimate source within each one of us. And how do we do that is by eliminating all the mental defilements which obscure this open source of happiness, the, the Buddha nature. And these obscurations, keep in mind, they are afflictive obscurations and cognitive obscurations. Afflictive obscurations consisting of afflictions, contaminated karmas, and the active seeds. And these are all rooted to the self grasping ignorance. And the, uh, the cognitive obscuration consists of the subtle stains of the afflictive obscuration. And the subtle stains reflected in the form of the self sand and attitude. Now, with this in mind, imagine that we are just a part of this, just a part of the, um, the, the this discourse on Heart Sutra by Guru Shankyamuni and then Aravindhishvara and then Shadaputra Diyam. With this in mind, let's turn to page 2 of the prayer book. Let's turn to page, page 2 of the prayer book. And then don't forget to imagine all of your mother's family, your two grandparents, all of your mother's family is around you. Imagine that you are leading this group and all others are joining you. And the Buddha, and the Buddha is just affectionately watching what is happening today here before he gives the teaching on the Sutra. Okay, let's read. And used by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel the all perverted views to you, the Buddha, the Dharma, I pay homage. And teach with great compassion to return the immaculate dharma to dispel all perverted views to you the Buddha Dharma I pay homage. And teach with great compassion you taught the immaculate dharma to dispel all perverted views to you the Buddha Dharma I pay homage. Okay, the next time keep in mind that so, so the whole purpose of this heart sutra teaching is to understand this passage which was cited uh, which was said by Harinigarchana. Here when you experience emptiness, in the experience of emptiness all arising conventional phenomena such as arising, arising, seizing, annihilation, all these stop because of which sickness, aging, death, fear, misery, anxiety, all dissolve and there is the ultimate pain. So with this mind there's results. In the very origination, there is no seizing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going. No I was told to the Bhagavad Gita Guru, the Supreme Master, the All Teacher, the one who taught the seeds, which is still loving that relationship. I was told to the Mother of the Buddha, one of the Zeros, and the Lord of the Lord. Who took the Mother of the Lord? 
simples. Por nossa paz, com as pessoas que não vivem as ativas do mundo. Entre o possession of emotions, the subduous of war, the gravity of the world is fixed. Again, it's turned to be seven. Dendron Mundo Mantra. Dendron Mundo Mantra. Ah, I'm going to go to the We awaken from the sleep of ignorance. And then, with the sleep of ignorance was a problem. All miseries they arise because of the sleep of ignorance. And all phenomena, particularly miseries, they arise from the respected causes in the form of the sleep of ignorance. And what these causes are in the form of afflictions, attachment, the Kodaric Hamas, imprints and so forth, they are all um, they are all indicated so well by the Tathagata, the Buddha Shakyamuni. And how to bring an end to these is also taught by the uh, Buddha Shakyamuni, the great seer. We with that mind, let's recite the meaning of the mantra first. All phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of the causes as well is taught by the great seer. Who is, who is perfected in love, perfected in knowledge, and perfected in power, like Buddha Shankyamani, one, and now always embrace only the virtuous things, now always embrace only the virtuous things that, that are such as the unconditional love, such as the wisdom of, wisdom of emptiness, to awaken oneself from the sleep of ignorance, so that I never suffer, so that I can teach this message to us great number of sentient beings as possible. Then number three, may I always be uh, in the company uh, where, where, my, where my good thoughts, where, my, where I can be more happy, where I can make others more happy. So this is known as good company. So the, the first one, the best of the teacher is known as Buddha. The best of the teaching is the teaching of compassion and unconditional love and the wisdom of emptiness, and the best of the companion is known as the companion. The best of which uh, makes you happier and makes your surrounding happier. So that is known as the Sangha. So with that in mind, uh, just keep in, uh, make a kind of a commitment. So this, may I never be separated from these three jewels. Okay, let's say this, number two, number three. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened. 
Batman Sanaga, finally terminated for the practice of giving slack water, may have become a product of benefit all sentient beings. I go for a few gentlemen Latin to the Buddha the Dharma the Sangha, by my termination for the practice of giving so forth, may have become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Page number 8. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today the Buddha's presence I generate a mindful awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. Okay, that's the, now let's go to page 10. <coughs> the page 10. Uh, page 10, we're going to read uh, the, the praise to the Buddha Shakyamuni. This is to uh, look for the qualities of this great teacher. This great teacher who, wa who was here once in person. Who was here in person. And this is exactly where we are sitting now. So, uh, let us seek blessing. Let us uh, blessing inspiration from this great, uh, this great, this incredibly compassionate, loving teacher who was once here, so alive, so living here in front of us. So, with that in mind, imagine that he's right there with, with the with us. Of course, he's there. He's no doubt he's there. The only thing is that our, our mind is not prepared. Our mental defilements. Imagine that. Our metal defilements are so plant and pure that we are seeing the, this incredible compassion about the Shakyamuni, teacher of the Shakyamuni in front of us. And then I imagine all such things are with you and you are there. <coughs> to the founder, the endowed, transcendent, and destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, the completely perfected, full awakened being. Perfect in knowledge and in good conduct. Sugata knows the world, supreme God of human beings to be tamed. Teach your gods and human beings. To you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subdued from the shank of men, I will straight make offerings and good offerings. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one God beyond, the four destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata over the world. Supreme God of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings. To you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, and prostrate the offerings and good friends. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one born beyond the four destroyer, the completely perfect, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugada, know the world, supreme God of human beings. To be tamed, teach of gods and human beings, to you the completely and full awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subdued from the Shakya clan, I prostrate me for friends and go for refuge. When, O Supreme amongst humans, you were born on this earth, you face of sudden strides, then said, I am supreme in this world, to you who are wise and unrestrained. We are pure bodies, far supremely pure, with emotion like a golden mountain, vain that blazes in the few worlds, with of the past, Lord, to you are restrained. With the supreme signs, based on your spotless moon, color like gold, to you are restrained. Just be like you, the three worlds are not, incompatible wise one, to you are restrained. The Savior having great compassion, the Father having all understanding, the field of merit with the qualities like a vast ocean, to you the one God did thus as a restrained. The purity that frees one from attachment, the virtue that frees one from the low realms, the one who has the one pure reality, to the Dharma that pacifies and restrains. Those who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you the sublime community intending virtue and restraint. Do not commit any non virtuous actions, but from all imperfect virtuous actions, subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a visual apparition, a flame of lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew, a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, see conditioned things as such. Through these merits, may such and beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the four falls, and be delivered from sensual solution, but turn the waves of aging, sickness, and death. Okay. <coughs> now let's turn to uh, page, uh, page 15, Khan Sutra. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now uh, this is the uh, same. Um, we're all together here, as I said earlier. This is the place, this is the exact spot where the great Prince Siddharth who for the sake of all sentient beings achieved the enlightenment under the Bodhi dream and then he turned the first wheel of Dharma in the Sarnath <coughs> on uh, the uh, Four Noble Truths in a very plain way and then to make it more refined 
for Noble Truths, modifying to give the ultimate teaching. Then he, he came to the Buddha, this Prince Siddharth in the form of Buddha Shakyamuni. He came to this place to, to teach the final the teaching, the final teaching on the wisdom of emptiness, how to wake up the sentient beings from this type of ignorance, which came to be known as the Professional Wisdom Sutra. There are so many, uh, there are so many uh, teachings on the Professional Wisdom Sutra, and the heart of which is what we are reciting now, which is also known as Heart Sutra. Now imagine, just be very creative, imagine that our very compassionate teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni, is in front of you. Is in front of you, there, smiling, so compassionately, affectionately, just uh, looking at you. And then, on his right side is our and then Buddha Shakyamuni with this very incredible gesture of love and affection towards you and so all sentient beings just just looking at your eyes with so much love and this Buddha Shakyamuni and then slowly went into deep samadhi into emptiness in the process to his right side is Aravalukiteshvara just imagine that Aravalukiteshvara and was just also absorbed into the dreamlike nature of all phenomena and to his left is Arhat Shariputra and uh, Shariputra and then surrounded by all Bodhisattvas, the monks, nuns and imagine from all different world systems, numerous world systems from the different galaxies, these Bodhisattvas from these different world systems, they come to know that the Buddha Shakyamuni is here on this vulture's peak and they simply become so enthusiastic to come to receive teachings, receive blessings from Buddha Shakyamuni. They all just emanated themselves with the medical power in the form of vultures. They all just imagine, they all just come flying in, in just numerous, in the, the, the innumerable number. They just came from all different world systems in the, in, by emanating themselves in the form of vultures. And then all started landing up in this place. And from distance, people see this as like a huge pile of vultures, which later came to be known as the vulture speak. So this imagine you are just seeing the uh, seeing all these the bodhisattvas in the form of vultures coming, flying and settling here, landing, and then uh, assuming their own real form as a human and showing respect to the Buddha Shakyamuni, to Aravalokiteshvara, and then taking their own seats. Just imagine that. And imagine how fortunate you are to be part of that. Okay. With this in mind, the points to keep in mind is then our Buddha Shakyamuni, while being immersed into this ultimate reality, the emptiness, then he being the full awakened being has access to both the truths simultaneously. Ultimate truth which he is at the moment immersed into and the conventional truth uh, through which he was he he uh, telepathically blessed and inspires. Now he's imagine he's inspiring Shariputra to ask question to Aravalukiteshvara as to how to eliminate all miseries and how the fortunate beings, how the, the fortunate people uh, who are in the lineage of the, the lineage of the, uh, the, uh, the the beings, the enlightenment, the lineage of the enlightenment, how they can practice. In short, those who aspire to become enlightened, those who aspire to become Buddha, how should they practice? Then Aryavalikiteshvara uh, started responding to the question and just going into too deep into understanding what emptiness is. And then saying that this emptiness should be thought of in terms of the empty first in the emptiness of the self, how you are dreamlike, how you do not exist objectively, you are just dreamlike how you are just subjectively created. And just as you are subjectively created, because you are on the you are imputed on the basis of the six elements, you are on the basis of the five aggregates, then the Buddha the he went on to explain as how each of these elements they're also dreamlike. How each of these aggregates they're also dreamlike. The physical form, the feeling, discrimination, composite factors, and so forth. And then saying that once you have this experience, all your fears will dissolve. 
and that is the 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 absolute peace experience of peace and then Buddha Shakyamuni came out of the meditation and the Buddha commented on the response given by Reverend Kishvara saying that this is such a well video, incredibly great video, uh, wonderful answer, wonderful response, um, discourse given on how to how to liberate oneself from the miseries. And all, everyone, you, if you, just imagine you and everyone seeing that the Buddha Shakyamuni seeing that the Buddha Shakyamuni, um, the Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, he commented to the answer so positively, you are also happy about the answer given by Aravrit Ishvara. So this is how uh, the Heart Sutra comes in. And so we will uh, say this together, just imagine the whole scenario, and particularly the subject matter of this. Okay, with that in mind, let's say this together. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus, Tita, he had one time, the Bhagavanas dwell on Master Vulture's mountain in Rajgriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration or the categories of phenomena called profound illumination. Also, at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravada Vitishvara looked upon the very practice of profound illumination of wisdom and beheld those five entities also as empty of inherent nature. The entrance of the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra, said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravada Vitishvara, how should any child of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravada Vitishvara, <coughs> Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty in the nature. Form is empty, empty is form. Empty is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, composite factors, the consciousness empty, Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are empty, without characteristic, unreduced, is no, without state, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no consciousness, no consciousness, no consciousness, no consciousness, no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extension of ignorance, and no so on, up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation path, there is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom. The mind without obscuration, thus without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, there is the end part of Nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifesting completely awakened, to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the professional wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as truth, this is in what form. The mantra of professional wisdom is declared. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, should train in the profound professional wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva. Aravalukiteshvara saying, Well said, well said, from the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound professional wisdom just as clearly indicated. Here the Bhagavad rejoice. The Bhagavad having just spoken, the beneficiary of the Bhagavad the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Aravalukiteshvara, who is around in the entirety all over the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised by spoken by the Bhagavad. Okay. As we recite this house through mantra, um, just um, imagine that the Buddha Shakyamuni here now uh, coming out of the, the Samadhi uh, he's telling us as to how um, not to uh, stay in samsara, how not to stay in the pains and fears of samsara and just come out of samsara, come out of the fear, pains and fears, just wake up from the sleep of ignorance. Why should the dream dictate you? Why should this ignorance dictate you of your, of your miseries? So you should become self-sufficient. You should become. Uh, you should become uh, the full awakened. You should have control of yourself. Just come out of that. And hearing these very melodious, compassionate words of the Buddha, imagine that you are telling uh, the all birds of the all your family members, your two grandparents, although they are they are not here with you. Just imagine, imagine that they are with you. And the all family members, all such a beings. 
and and then you should be the guide here. You should be telling them, look at what the uh, Gamasha teacher for the Shakyamuni is advising us. So he's so affectionately telling us not to remain in the the dictates of the uh, the ignorance. Let's all come out of that. And then as we inspire others, everyone else gets inspired. And they all come along with you and you are taking them alone with you uh, towards the full the lasting happiness in the form of gate gate para gate para sangate buddhiswa okay so imagine all such beings that they're joining you and the buddhas they are so happy so please all buddhas and bodhisattvas they are so happy to see that what are you doing here okay let's see this Gadi Gadi Mara Gadi Mara Sangadi Bodhi Svatya Om Gadi Gadi Mara Gadi Mara Sangadi Bodhi Svatya Teachings of the three supreme jewels possessing the power of the truth may in and allow the hindrance be transformed, may they be dispelled, may they be non existent, may they be pacified, may all negative forces opposed to the Dharma be completely pacified, may the host of 80,000 of sin be pacified, may we be separated from problems and conditions so harmful to the Dharma, may all enjoyments be in accord with the Dharma, may all species and perfect happiness pervade this place now. For the eight verse my training. With the determination to achieve the highest aim for the benefit of all sentient beings, which is surpassed even the wish for furniture, may hold them dear at all times. Whenever I interact with someone, may I view myself as the lowest human soul, and from the very depths of my heart, respectfully hold others as superior. And all my deeds may I probe into my mind, and as soon as mental and emotional afflictions arise, as they endanger myself and others, and strongly confront them and avert them, when I see blame to one person character, negativity and suffering. I hold them dear for they are rare to find as if I discovered a true treasure. With, when others out of jealousy treat me wrongly with abuse and in scorn, I take upon myself the defeat and offer to others the victory. When someone whom I've held or in whom I've placed great hopes, mysteries <coughs> May I regard him still as my precious teacher. In brief, may I offer benefit and joy to all my mothers, both directly and indirectly. I quietly take upon myself all the hurts and pains of my mothers. May all these remain undefiled by the stains of the eight mundane concerns. And may I recognize all these things as illusions, devoid of clinging, be released from bondage. From my two collections, vast of space that I have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, being the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds are wisdom eyes planted the ignorance. Okay, uh, we'll turn to page 22. Page 22. Uh, this is the Seven Limpuja. And as we say the Seven Limpuja, you wholeheartedly feel, wholeheartedly um, the, the, the emphasize on each of the set points. 
I bow down to the full RMG tree. You, minds among humans, grant of freedom in the present, past, and future, in the worlds of ten directions. To all of you with body, speech, and sincere mind, I bow down. With the energy of aspiration for the Bodhisattva Pao, with a sense of deep respect, and with as many bodies as atoms in the world, to all you have Buddhas visualized as real, I bow down. On every atom of Buddhas, numberless as atoms, each amidst a host of Bodhisattvas. And I'm confident the sphere of all phenomena is entirely filled with Buddhas in this way. With infinite oceans of praise for you, and oceans of sound from the aspects of my voice, I sing the breathtaking excellence of Buddhas, and celebrate all of you gone to bliss. Beautiful flowers and regal garlands, sweet music, scented oils and parasols, sparkling lights and sublime incense, well, for to you victorious ones. Fine dress and fragrant perfumes, sandalwood powder, heat eyes, mount Miro, all wondrous offerings and spectacular array offer to you victorious ones. and bow down to all victorious ones. Every harmful action I've done with my body, speech and mind, overwhelmed by attachment, anger and confusion, all these are openly laid bare before you. I lift my heart and rejoice in all the merit of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in ten directions. Of solid realizers, hearers, still reigning and those beyond and all ordinary beings. <coughs> You who are the bright light of worlds in ten directions, who have attained the Buddha's omniscience through the stages of awakening. For all you who are my guides, please turn the supreme wheel of Dharma. With palms together, I earnestly request you may please stay with us for aeons, numberless as atoms of the world, for the happiness and well-being of all wanderers in samsara. Whatever slight merit I may have created by paying homage, offering and acknowledging my faults, rejoicing and requesting that the Buddha stay and teach, I dedicate all this for the full awakening of all being. Okay, a short mandala. <coughs> Imagine that you are offering everything good that exists in this universe to the Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni, perhaps Buddha Shakyamuni, and then the uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and all the things that join here. Oh, on the proper path. May I be blessed as my path is free of flaws. May I be blessed as the flaws are seen in the light of exalted wisdom. Okay, here, <coughs> imagine that um, is the Buddha Shakyamuni is here just living, living in front of you and uh, you are making this request to him in person. So make it so that the dramatic and alive. But let's say this once more. <coughs> May I be blessed that my mind is directed towards the Dharma. May I be blessed that my Dharma practices on the proper path. May I be blessed that the path is free of flaws. May I be blessed that the flaws are seen in the light of exalted wisdom. Becoming frustrated with ignorance that grasps the true existence. Please bless me with genuine, genuine renunciation, seeing all aspects of samsara as viciously repulsive. Please bless me that my mind stream overflows with the precious bodhicitta that cherishes others more than myself. Please bless me to have an immaculate experience of the wisdom of emptiness that does not see even an atom of intrinsic reality. On the basis of understanding how things come into being by dependent origination through mere conditioning. Please bless me that my mind stream overflows with the precious wisdom of the non duality of bliss and emptiness. Idam Guru Ratna Mandela Vamni Radhya.
Okay, the foundation of all good qualities. So this is the, the, the we are very auspicious. Uh, is very we are very fortunate. What else? Auspicious uh, occasion that the Buddha Shakyamuni, he really, he was really here in this place. And we are right here in this place in front of him. And then we are <coughs> setting our own uh, blueprint of the whole path which takes us to the Buddhahood, traversing along the Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasamgate, and so on. With that in mind, um, <coughs> again, all sentient beings are joining you. The foundation of all good qualities is the kind of perfect beer guru. Correct devotion to him is the root of the path. By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me to rely upon him with great respect. Understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is greatly meaningful and is difficult to find again. Please bless me to generate the mind that unceasingly dead line takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly it decays and death comes. After death, just like a shadow follows the body, the results of virtues and non-virtues come and follow. Finding firm and definite conviction in this, please that no always to be careful to abandon even the slightest negativity and accomplish all virtuous deeds. Some sad splendors are unsatisfying and unreliable. Seeking them is the door to all suffering. Recognizing these shortcomings, please bless me to generate the strong wish for the bliss of liberation. A loud and screwed question arise. The root of the teachings is keeping the breath in motion vows. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the sea of samsara, so for all mother my creator beings, please bless the cedars, twin and supreme bodhicitta, and bear the responsibility to bring my greater beings. Even if I have developed bodhicitta, but I don't practice the three types of morality, I'll not achieve enlightenment. With my clear recognition of this, please practice the Bodhisattva vow with great energy. Once I pacify the distractions to wrong objects and correctly analyze the meaning of reality, please bless me generally quickly within the mind stream, the unified part of karma body, especially inside. Having become a pure vessel by training in the general part, please bless me to enter the holy gateway of the fortunate ones, the supreme pleasure of the ego. At that time, the basis of accomplishing through attainments is keeping pure vows and smile As I become firm and convinced of this, please bless me to protect these vows and pleasures like my life. Then having realized the importance of the two stages, the essence of Ashriyana, by practicing with great energy, never keeping up the four sessions, please bless me to realize the teachings of the Holy Guru. Like that, may the Gurus who show the noble path and the spiritual friends who practice in their own lives, please bless me to pacify completely all out and in the hindrances. In all my lives, never separated from perfect Gurus, may enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing the stages in the path, may I could attain this dear version Dharma. Okay, now the, the next part, which is the main practice generating the amount of consumed yoga, the Tanjaya Ninja Vasim Kyapa. So, this will do it very quickly. <coughs> okay, quickly in a sense, um, something complete, uh, but um, uh, we'll do it quickly. Okay, um, uh, reinforce the visualization of Buddha Shakyamuni here, right in front of us, and this was actually what happened. Buddha Shakyamuni. And Aram, um, the Aramatriya, Aramajushri, Aramadukteshvara, Arantara, and the Aranigarjuna, then um, Acharya Achari Chandragirti, then uh, Bodhisattva Shanti Deva, Adisha Deva Marashirigana, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and all Bodhisattva and Bodhisattvas, just think of all Bodhisattva and Bodhisattvas. And then Bodhisattva Shakyamuni as the main here. And then uh, say um, that you surrounded by your two grandparents, all and you know, all family members, all the mother sentient beings around you. And and the purpose of this practice is finally to activate bodhicitta and wisdom and emptiness so that the mind is cleansed fully, that the ultimate source of happiness is uh, manifested fully. Okay, with that in mind, well let's first do the four scenes very quickly. Um, it's just gonna be a few seconds each. Okay, first. All composite things are impermanent. Think of how everything is impermanent. How many how many people you know in the past, they are now gone. And 2015, gone forever. So like this, we see that this is the reality, this is the fact of impermanence. With this knowledge of the impermanence, we are aware, we have a deep discernment that Finally, uh, we have to be more thoughtful about w tomorrow, where we are going, where, where we are going to go. We are on a journey. 
So we are not to think of this life as the final. This life as just a money power like this. It's just very, it's just very short a time. It's very short a time. We just guessed on this. So we have to invest the time, energy, everything what we have. Okay, partly for your, partly on this life to live this life, but then more on the the, the, the journey, the next life on birds. So with that in mind, um, with that in mind. Uh, knowing that what a journey is going to be like, the journey, where we're going, this is the result, and what we are today is the cause. So the co result is determined by the cause, and the cause, if the cause is contaminated, if the cause is contaminated, the result, no doubt, is going to be misery. So this is the meaning of the Buddha Shakyamuni. So kindly um, exhorted that that all contaminated things of suffering nature, particularly the worst of the contamination is contamination in the form of attachment, anger, jealousy and so forth, and the ten non virtuous actions and <laughs> their corresponding causes, and they all arise out of this self grasping ignorance and self centered energy. So the worst of the contaminations is self grasping and self centered energy. And feeling uh, feeling so you know, feeling really frustrated with these two, wishing to really eliminate eliminate them and then thinking about with these two things it, they only give rise to miseries miseries are all kind of fears like the, the, the like the, the fears which the captives are going through and as the terrorists the fears going through in the minds of the those people in the hospices and the hospitals then in the, the slaughterhouse and so forth all of these and then the same the a terrible irritation, anger, angst going through in the minds of the people fighting and so forth. So all these things, no one is to be blamed, only the self-grasping ignorance, self-centered energy. Even you are not to be blamed. It is these two demons which abide in the mind and create all these miseries. Oh, is a way out? Yes, there is a way out. And the Buddha said that the way out is the wisdom. The wisdom. Um, just as darkness can be eliminated by the uh, uh, by the light, it is the light of it, it is introducing the, the light of the wisdom that the darkness of ignorance can be eliminated. So, what is this light of wisdom? By the very definition, the wisdom is the mind which discerns the reality as it is. What is the reality? The reality is that things are all dreamlike, things are all empty from the object side, just like someone waking up from the sleep. Uh, we come to know that things are all dream, it was not so real. So, we quickly meditate on this <coughs> emptiness. How this self, what you are meditating in front of the Buddha Shakyamuni here on Vulture's Bay. So, this person, known as I, Dorji, or whatever, so this person is nothing but made of six elements. And in the earth, the solid part, the bones, the flesh, the heart, the lungs, and so forth, they are not this, they are not this person. Remove them. Now the element of water, the blood which is pumped now by, by the heart, is also not the cell. Remove them. Element of the fire, the <coughs> the body heat, is also not me. Remove that. Element of air, the air which I breathe in and out, is also not me. Remove that. Element of space, space empty, and I'm a solid person. This, the space is also not me. Remove that. Element of consciousness or the element of mind. The mind does not have a gender, but I'm a female, I'm a male, so it has a gender. So therefore, the mind is also not me. And others from distance cannot see my mind, whereas they can see me. So this, so therefore, the mind is also not me. And further, if this mind were to be analyzed further, but look for where is the present mind, it cannot be, it cannot be found. So this mind is also illusion like how can the illusion like phenomena can be the uh, objective real, objective example of the self. So if the mind is not the self, keep that aside. What's left? <coughs> Nothing is left. So the self is not one with its past, no different from its past. Where is the self objectively there? Remembering what Arjuna said that if the mirage were to be were to be the water, why not those close by the mirage see water? In a like in a like manner. If this I were to exist objectively, why not those close by, why not do, as you grow, go close to its object, I see this self. But contrary to that, uh, the self disappears. This is indication that the self is empty from the object side. Okay, so I uh, just respond to these two questions. First question, what I see now, I'm just seeing the six elements. <coughs> Where's the self? 
self disappears, the self is empty. Just grab to this experience, that self disappears. Abide in this experience for a while. <coughs> Again, the self comes back. So this means that the self does exist, but earlier you saw the self disappear, which means that the self disappeared not as a self, it disappeared as an objectively existing self. So what is the benefit of this? <coughs> what is the benefit of this? It is like waking up from the sleep of a nightmare. With so much of fear in the nightmare, with the book of the nightmare, the moment you wake up, the fear dissolves. Knowing that everything is just my mental creation, they are simply created by my mind. Likewise, knowing that everything is subject created, created, nothing from object, all our miseries of life, <coughs> they dissolve. Okay, this is a benefit, um, the, which helps to transcend sorrow. The Buddha said, transcending sorrow is nirvana. Okay. Now with this mind, now let's switch to the bodhicitta. Switch to bodhicitta. Now since that we have already meditated on uh, bodhicitta for the last many days, we'll quickly make a commitment. We'll quickly make a commitment. Commitment with folded hands. With folded hands. Imagine that bodhisattva. That bodhisattva is right here. It's surrounded by all the Buddhist bodhisattvas who came in the form of vultures, all different world systems from the different galaxies. They are there. You are so fortunate. It's so beautiful, spotlessly clean, white moon disk, horizontally sitting with the heart. Imagine that. Oh, it's amazing that you made, made such a conscious coming to Bodhicitta. But the question is, how can you become Buddha? How do you know that you can, you can become a Buddha? And how can you become a Buddha? First, we can become a Buddha. We have the seed of the Buddhahood. Within each one of us, the greatest of the source of happiness is within each one of us, within myself. But then so far, it's not activated. How come that you can do it now? Yes, of course. For, for, um, so far, I was under the sway of the self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude, particularly under the ignorance. Now I'm not going to give in to the, the, to the ignorance. I'm going to befriend. I'm going to resort to the wisdom of emptiness to counter this ignorance. What is this wisdom of emptiness? Okay. Quickly experience, quickly retrieve the experience of the emptiness of self, which we did as a part of the third seal of the Buddha, the Buddha's teaching. Quickly see uh, that you see yourself in the form of the six elements. Element of earth, the solid part, which is not you. Element of water, the blood, which is part of me now, this is not you. Element of uh, element of fire, which is the element of fire, with your body your heat, body heat is not you. Element of air is not you. The element of space is not you. Element of consciousness is not you. No, take us out all these six elements. What is left? Nothing is left. Where is the self? So it's not there. Okay. Abide in this experience. Keep in mind the two questions, responses to the two questions. First one, what are you seeing? I'm seeing the six elements. Where is the self? It is not there. It is empty. Abide in this experience of the emptiness of the self. This space of emptiness is exactly what the Buddha Shakyamuni, our compassionate teacher, was absorbed into when the dialogue was happening between Aravalokiteshvara and Shariputra. Now, this is exactly what you are doing. This, what a great joy the Buddha would feel. How proud you of the Buddha would feel now. Okay, with this in mind, this space of emptiness slowly transformed it into a spotlessly clean, thumb-sized white Vajra, vertically sitting on the moon disk at your heart. Now this moon is the conventional bodhicitta, which is the final remedy to overcome the self-centered attitude. And the Vajra is the ultimate bodhicitta, which is the final remedy to overcome the self-grasping ignorance. So this guarantees that the mental defilements will be overcome fully, and because of which, the ultimate source of happiness, the Buddha nature, the Thagata Garbha, is going to be manifest fully, becoming like a sun, which will penetrate, whose lights will penetrate through each and every atom of the universe. Okay, amazing. But what about 
my dear mother sentient beings. Well, they are also should be liberated. I should not leave I should not let them stay like this suffering. I must leave them all because of the immense love and affection and compassion that you feel to all sentient beings. Imagine that uh, that this because of this love, the moon is about to visualize the heart multiplies infinite number of times. Infinite number of times. And share one set with your mother, one set with your father, one set with each of the dear mother sentient beings, one set with each one in Bodh Gaya, one set in with each one of in, in India, one set with each one in the new country, one set with each and every one in the entire universe. Oh, this is amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, what a greater thing can I ever expect? that I'm offering all the other such beings through from this holy place where the Buddha Shai, our compassion teacher was so alive here. What a miracle is happening, what a dream is happening, coming true. Okay, keep in mind that just as you are feeling so joyful, all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they are watching you, they are so proud of you, so proud of you. And for the first time, since time immemorial until now, for the first time, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they are seeing such a miracle happening, real miracle, which they love you so much, they love Sinjami so much, and so far we fail to bring anything which made, which would make the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas happy. Today we are doing that, they are so happy, they are so proud of you. And seeing you, but this is such a, such as the situation with the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, why not we invite Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to be a witness for our taking the aspiration Bodhisattva vow on this holy place. So with in mind, imagine that also you slowly we stand up, make three prostrations to the Buddha Shakyamuni and all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, so let's see all this done in our And you, along with your two man parents, all the other such beings, let's make three prostrations. <laughs> Okay, those of you who, uh, who have uh, the knee problem, the back pain problem, and the body pain, you feel free to sit in the right, and the rest of us will sit on um, the right knee, and then you'll see that you will suffer. The both are bad. Let's turn to page 434. Page 34. Page 34. At the first time, now he says, I go for refuge to the trouble gem. So this one, as you know, this is preparing ourselves to uh, this uh, ceremony and taking us to the Bodhisattva vow. And to reinforce visualizing all Buddhism Bodhisattvas, imagine that if you, if you, as a very young child who performed so well in, uh, in athletics, and your parents, they, they just come there to see, to feel the pride um, over the achievement of their child or daughter or their son. This is exactly what all Buddhists and Bodhisattvas are feeling now. They are just so with great excitement. They are waiting to see what you are doing. And you and all the other sentient beings, you are there. And um, say, first we take refuge in Buddha <coughs> Sangha, I go for refuge to Triple Gem. And second one, I confess the negativities individually, which is to clear our mental defilements, to prepare ourselves, to clear the road to enlightenment. And third one, I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings. This is to enrich ourselves with a positive um, merit, to have enough energy to take to his Buddhahood. And then finally, I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. This is the whole heart. 
updating yourself and to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas that the purpose of me doing this is to uh, to hold the Buddhahood, to achieve Buddhahood, which is the most precious task of my life, my existence. Okay, and I say this three times. And when also she made the journey, you right? and you're living this, and all Buddhism, Buddhist Shakyamuni, all Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they are with great joy, they are just watching you. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem, I confess the negativities individually, I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings, I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem, I confess the negativities individually, I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings, I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem, I confess the negativities individually, I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings, I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. Okay, now the actual taking of the aspiration of Buddhist vow. So we are indeed, we are very fortunate. Had it been the case that this morning it was raining, we cannot possibly make it. And because of all these situ conducive situations, we are able to make it. And uh, we should be, this is a great, great auspicious time. And we are all very fortunate that we are making it. And we are here right in front of the Buddha Shakyamuni, who actually was alive here right before us and we're here and all Buddhism Bodhisattva it's just a matter of our the cleansing had it been the case that we are so pure the Bodhisattva is right there and all the Buddhism Bodhisattva are there our our evolution is there and share Buddha is there and uh, we don't mind so just wholeheartedly invoke Gurus Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and uh, the stanza the, the verses there are two the first verse is pertaining to the past Buddhas and the second verse is pertaining to ourselves. The first one which says, just as the that the Buddhas have done with one Bodhisattva is how do the, the, the Buddhas, they are so successful. They were so successfully, they became enlightened, they were able to activate the ultimate source of happiness for the benefit of oneself and for all sentient beings. How they were able to do that? Well, because of two reasons. One, initially they are motivated, they were motivated by the Mother Bodhicitta. Then, then after being motivated by the Mother Bodhicitta, that I will become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings, then they actually uh, engaged in the Bodhisattva deeds. Bodhisattva deeds such as the six perfections or the ten perfections. So this is how they managed, they, how they succeeded. And then the second stanza says, likewise, I will also take the uh, following different steps. Initially by Jain Bodhicitta, I'll Jain Bodhicitta here in this very holy land of the Raj, um, of the Vulture Speak. And then, just as the early Buddhas, the Jain Bodhicitta, are also Jain Bodhicitta, and just the early Buddhas, they engage in the Bodhisattva deeds, I'll also engage in Bodhisattva deeds, so that very soon I'll also become Buddha one like them to benefit all the other sentient beings, becoming like a sun to penetrate each and every atom of the universe. Okay, with a whole heart, imagine that the uh, that your two kind parents, all the family members, all sentient beings are joining you, and you're living this group. And then, as we uh, the, during the third repetition, when uh, the, with the second stanza, the last two lines, when you say that, and likewise, shall I two successful foreign bodhisattva practices, imagine that you achieve, you attain uh, aspiration of bodhisattva vow, and you feel you rejoice in it. Okay, let's say this three times. Wholeheartedly, Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as the previous Buddhas have generated Mother Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully formed 12 in the Bodhisattva practices, likewise for the benefit of all sentient beings, I'll generate the Mother Bodhicitta, and likewise shall I too successfully follow the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the Mother Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, likewise for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the Mother Bodhicitta, and likewise shall I too successfully follow the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the Mother Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, likewise for the benefit of all sentient Beings, I'll give the mother Bodhicitta, and likewise shall I too successfully follow the Bodhisattva practices. Okay, here you have received the Buddhist aspiration Bodhisattva vow, and the commitment is not at all complicated. Uh, simply make a, um, a very heartfelt, pure thought, and henceforth I'll try my best to the best of my ability. I'll try, I'll try to be compassionate towards others, and I'll try not to harm others as much as I can. Okay, just make this feeling, and with this mind, I uh, just feel a sense of great rejoice that oh, how fortunate it is 
that everything being so conducive that we're all together here taking the astral bodhisattva well, how many people they really come to this place and how many people they really take this astral bodhisattva vow so it's so rare so from that point of view we are so fortunate we are so fortunate and you just feel the distance to join and imagine that telling everyone else who came on the uh, came to this place never mind you are all a part of this uh, ceremony so you are all part of this ceremony so the only thing is we need to know uh, finally the purpose coming here is what the Buddha Shakyamuni uh, absorbed in he was absorbed in the um, the wisdom of emptiness um, motivated by great compassion so do two bodhicittas so with that in mind, all of these things are happening and at the same time, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they are watching us. They are so happy, they are so proud of you today. They are really, really proud of you today. And from your side, from each one of us, uh, from the side of each one of us, this is the greatest meaning of a life. This is the greatest meaning of a life. So with this in mind, and yet, uh, had it not been for the, the Buddha Shakyamuni, the incredible compassion Buddhist acumen and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas this is totally impossible so as a gesture of thanking all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas for making this possible let us slowly stand up and make three prostration to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and imagine this all the adults and Shindis are joining you This is a great event. We are very fortunate. Okay, so now this is such a memorable uh, time. So we never know whether such a thing will ever, ever happen, happen again. For sure, it will happen um, more and more often, more and more intense. But the this same group, of course, will meet many, many more times, um, even before enlightenment. Okay, so. Um, this is such a memorable event and um, to make it a point that this is what we are never separated from this life and the future lives to the Buddhahood. <laughs> and once you come, actually the Buddhahood, the goal, the Bodhiswaha is accomplished. So before that, um, to make sure that we are ne never separated and we just go swiftly with, through Gade Gade, Paragate, Parasangade, Bodhiswaha, let's turn to page 35 to make a commitment not to be separated even at the cost, my, cost of our life so let's say it three times the end stanza throughout my future lifetimes may all of us be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the two precious bodhicittas even at the cost of our life throughout my future lifetimes may all of us be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the two precious bodhicittas even at the cost of our life Throughout my future lifetimes, may all of us be guided by Aramin Buddha, compassion Buddha, and be able to uphold the true precious bodhicittas even in the course of my life. Okay, the, the next. Now feeling exceptionally compassionate towards the all the devil ascension beings for they are being blinded by ignorance, how they are being under the sway of the dream of ignorance, seeing them and then you seeing how things are all illusion like how dream how they're all dream like and then wishing to to help the sentient beings by teaching this okay let's read the following uh, stanzas from bodhisattva shanti devas guided the bodhisattva of life page 36 
Therefore, such beings resemble trains. Upon analysis, they are like pendant trees. Whether they are released or not from sorrow, ultimately there is no difference. What is there to gain and what is there to lose with things that I am to have true existence in this way? Who is there to pay me respect and who is there to abuse me? From what are pleasure and pain derived? What is there to be happy or unhappy about? When I search for ultimate nature, who is there to crave and what is there to crave for? Upon analysis, the worst world of living beings is found to have no true existence. Therefore, who can die here? What is there to come and what has been? Who are friends and who are relatives? All oh, you who are investigating reality, please recognize as I've done that all this is just like space. Those who wish to be happy are greatly disturbed by causes for conflict and overjoyed by the causes of pleasure. While finding happiness, they suffer, and in order to find it, they exert themselves. They argue with others, cut and step one another. With many wrong deeds, they live in a state of great hardship. Even though they repeatedly come to happy existence <coughs> and experience much pleasure there, upon dying, they fall for a long time into the unbearable suffering of lower realm. Within conditioned existence, the chasms of suffering are many, and the liberating comprehension of ultimate truth is absent. Furthermore, the apprehension of true existence and understanding of emptiness mutually contradict one another. Yet, if while in conditioned existence I do not realize this, I shall continue to experience a limitless ocean of misery, unbearable and beyond analogy. Likewise, through not having realized emptiness, I have little strength for virtue, and my human life of pleasure and endowment is indeed very short. <coughs> and avoid illness. I am concerned with hunger, rest, and sleep. I am enjoyed by others. I keep meaningless company with the chantish. Therefore, this life swiftly passes with no meaning, and it is hard to find. In this state, where is there the means to reverse this beginningless habit of grasping true existence? Furthermore, devils are exerting themselves to cast us into vast, unfortunate realms. They show us many mistaken paths, and it is hard to resolve doubts about the perfect way. It is it will be hard to find the leisure of human life in, and extremely difficult to find the presence of the Buddhas. It is hard to forsake this flood of disturbing conceptions. Alas, and human beings will continue to suffer. Oh, indeed, it is worth feeling sorrow for those that drift in the river of pain, who, although they experience great misery, are unaware of the suffering they go through. For example, some ascetics wash themselves again and again, and others repeatedly enter a fire, but although they thereby suffer greatly, they pride themselves in being content. Similarly, those who mistake the suffering for joy and think as though there are no aging and death are first of all killed by the law of death and then experience unbearable misery or falling into low realms. When shall I be able to extinguish the pains of those tormented by the fires of suffering with the rain of my accumulated happiness that is sprung from the clouds of my merits? And by having in the manner of not referring to true existence, respectfully gather the accumulation of merit, when by referring to the other will I be able to reveal the emptiness to those who are wretched and sad? Okay, now to rejoice, to rejoice in this event of having taken the aspiration of the vow, the conversion of Bodhicitta and the ultimate Bodhicitta. And this is so, so precious, so, so precious. Even if we are to really pay a huge amount of money, this is not really possible. So everything just came into such a conducive uh, situation. So let us rejoice. The more we rejoice, the, the consistency wanting to continue will happen. And this consistency is the one which guarantees us that we will reach Kate, kate, para kate, para sankate, okay. In order to further increase it from now on, those with discernment who have lucidly seized an awakened mind in this way should follow the manner. Today my life has borne fruit, having well obtained this human existence. I've been born in the family of the Buddha and now I'm one of Buddha's children. Thus whatever actions I do from now on must be in accord with the family. Never shall I disgrace or pollute his noble and unsullied race. Just like a blind man discovering a jewel in a heap of rubbish, I was by some coincidence an awakening mind has been born within me. It is the supreme ambrosia that overcomes the sovereignty of death. It is the inexhaustible treasure that eliminates all poverty in the world. It is the supreme medicine that quells the world's disease. It is a tree that shelters all beings wandering and tired on the path of conditioned existence. It is a universal grace that leads to freedom from unhappy states of birth. It is the dawning moon of the mind that dispels the torment of disturbing conceptions. It is a great sun that finally removes the misty ignorance of the world. It is a punishment of butter from the churning of the milk of the 
all those guests traveling on the path of conditioned existence who wish to experience abundance and happiness, this will satisfy them with joy and actually place them in supreme bliss. Today, in the presence of all the protectors, when by the world to be guests at the festival of temporary and ultimate delight, may gods and demigods and all be joyful. Okay. So this is indeed a great, great event, a great, great um, celebration, <coughs> and um, the, the the light of the wisdom we have generated now, the light of the bodhicitta we have generated, may these two lights proliferate. Imagine that they proliferate infinite number of times, and she will uh, be shared with each and every dear Malaysian beings in the entire universe. So that the darkness of the ignorance of self-grasping and the darkness of self-centered attitude are eliminated from their minds and that they experience the bounties of happiness eternally, the bounties of happiness of Buddhahood eternally. <coughs> and let us also dedicate the merits thus gathered that His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the true source of joy and happiness on this earth today, that He lives long and that His wishes be fulfilled spontaneously. And let me personally dedicated merits thus gathered that through your concerted effort in this bodhicitta and the wish of emptiness may each one of you very soon see the dawn of the bodhicitta and the wisdom of wish of emptiness within yourself and become so confident becoming um, become so happy so confident so tranquil so serene a great greatly composed and greatly confident in your own being, self-confidence, fearlessness, incredible joy, just reverberating this joy and confidence and fearlessness in the minds of all dear mother sentient beings, so that each one of you are able to guide infinite dear mother sentient beings as possible in the very, very near future. May the teaching of Bodhicitta flourish in all ten directions. May the teaching of wisdom and emptiness flourish in all ten directions in the minds of dear mother sentient beings, the present and the future. If you have mind, and let's recite, um, let's recite the page 43, the end dedication prayer, page 43. I dedicate the merits thus gathered towards the realization of the deeds and the prayers of Buddhists and Bodhisattvas of the three times and to the hold of the doctrine of scripture and insight. May I all lives through the force of this merit never separate from the four wheels of the Mahayana vehicle and accomplish all the stages of the path of renunciation of the Bodhicitta perfectly in the two stages. From my two collections, vast the space that I have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddhas for all those whose minds wish my blood and the ignorance. Okay, just abide in this joy for a while, experience the joy for a while. And imagine that this now we quickly seal these virtues. Sealing the virtues is known as uh, see, just as if the government seals the house. No one is supposed to touch the house. Likewise, if you seal the virtues, the virtues will never get exhausted or get damaged uh, for, for any reasons. It will, become, it will remain intact on the, until Buddhahood. So let us seal this virtue by meditating on the emptiness of this virtue, <coughs> emptiness of uh, everything around. So, okay, so, uh, let us feel <coughs> the joy, let us tr feel the tremendous joy of this great celebration and a great ceremony of taking having taken the Asmin Buddhist and Vow and all Buddhists and Bodhisattvas are so proud, so happy. And this is the greatest gift that you can possibly offer to all Buddhists and Bodhisattvas. This is the greatest gift that you can possibly offer to your two grandparents, all of them, all of the most ancient beings. Just abide in this experience of joy. Okay, who is experiencing joy? I. Where is this I? <coughs> oh, this I is nothing. It's just the six elements. And where is this I? This I is not there. It's empty. Abide in the experience of the, the emptiness of I for a while. <coughs> And this joy, joy, the feeling of joy is also mind. Even this mind, 
Mind exists in time, and time connotes three sections, three components: the beginning, middle, and the part, middle and end. The present moment of the joy. Where is the present moment of the joy? Present moment should exclude the past and the future. And this present moment, what we, what, what we call as the present moment of the joy, this in a, invariably it has the three components: the beginning, middle, and the end. The beginning is past. And is yet to come, so this is not really the present. The present is one third of that. Even that, what you call as the present moment, one third of that. Even that is not the present. It also has three components: the past, the present, and the future. So, analyzing this way, no present moment of the mind can be found. So, where is the present moment of the joy? It is. It disappears. What I saw earlier, what I felt earlier, was a dream. Where is it? It's not easy to be found. It's empty. Apart from this experience, for a while. Oh, you know, slowly you come out of that. You come out of that. You start seeing everything once more. They're all illusion-like. Within the illusion-like nature, the functionalities they operate. The world operates. And try as much as possible to see how the world that you're experiencing operates. The, the perfect, with the perfect sequence, with the perfect order, orderly <coughs> the operation function of the world, yet is all illusion like. Within within the illusion like, there's the perfection of the orderliness of the function that is happening. Okay, let's make three prostrations, and after this we'll go to the, the Buddha statue there. We take a blessing <coughs> here, and we'll see. And then, as much as possible, relax yourself. At the same time, see if you could recite. Keep on reciting the other gati gati para gati para sangati bodhi swaha and om mani 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 swaha. Okay, let's make sure we're together. Okay. Okay. Oh! <laughs>